is like a secret area in a video game. Oh, this is uh, this is you the, meant the channel to find Easter this. egg. Um, is it working now? So yeah, this is a new system for uh, for streaming that is on YouTube. Yeah, we go. It's public a now. New, a Beautiful. new system on YouTube where it doesn't appear. Oh. Yeah, new, new system on YouTube. New system ah. for... Mm, no, mm, we don't need to... Yeah, don't need to do, no, yeah, this is probably going to take like 20 minutes. <laughs> but it's... um, yeah. Oh, yeah. hey, I can see it now. Yes. Seven watching. Yes. So YouTube have updated how all of their streaming stuff works, and this is my first attempt trying to use it. And considering that, I think this has gone remarkably well. But uh, we're here to talk about... Doctor Who season 12, as it is so far, the first three episodes are out. Uh, I'm joined today by Stubeck Fall. Hello, everybody. It's lovely to be here. Thank you for having me, Jay. So, um, we're, we're planning on doing this for the, uh, the whole of season 12, as it comes out. Uh, possibly not episode by episode, we'll see how it goes. But before we get into, like, you know, there's a lot of context going into season 12... So how did you uh, how did you feel at the end of oh, season yes. eleven? How wh- how were you how were you looking forward to season twelve when it started? Um, deflated. Didn't really give that much of a shit anymore. Wasn't even sure whether I really even wanted to watch series twelve, and kind of appreciate that because Doctor Who has been like I love Doctor Who. It's been this constant thing in my life for a little while, but I felt like I needed a break from it. Yeah, I can I can definitely say I would be very much in favor of like a temporary cancellation at the moment maybe just like a five ten year break yeah and just I never to give me a breather you know yeah. i never thought i'd catch I mean, myself I'm... saying that but yeah i mean i'm different from most fans because you know i've been obsessively following the declining quality of new doctor who for oh, the yeah. last five years or something like that you can't say that people who think that peter capaldi is good which he is but some of the material uh, oh well, yeah, uh, oh, oh yeah. This fan, yeah. I like how I like how you've moved on from talking about. You've you've gone okay. So talking about Star Wars, that's a very controversial topic. Hey, let's talk about something a bit less controversial. Doctor Who. But it's like that doesn't oh. ca- that doesn't cause shouting matches on the internet all the bloody time. It's the thing that um, and I I like to you know I like to keep my cool about things, but of everything, it's the thing that's got me closest to just being like. And I'm I'm angry about this. Like I don't I don't like how the show is being handled, and it's one of those things that's really close to me personally as a series. Yeah, so. yeah, but uh, the, the stuff. So, I've had a lot of fun over the years ripping into shit episodes of Doctor Who. Like, I like I made a tw- like when Hellbent came out. I made a 25 minute video on it, and that's like some of the most fun I've ever had making a YouTube video. So, even though it's not a very good episode, I kind of appreciate it for that. Oh yeah, that's the, the as a content creator. Yeah, it can be so much fun to just. Um, I've I've always sort of wanted to do a kill the moon video. Just oh yes, the um, the beauty of a, a creature which has a life cycle where it hatches from a moon sized egg, and then immediately lays an egg of the exact <laughs> just same like, size. It's just like, like whenever anyone complains about a Doctor Who episode being stupid, you just say. Have you watched this show? <laughs> it's like, uh, you know the... That's the point, Doctor. Uh, do you remember the skit from Ricky, Rick, Ricky, Rick and Morty, where they've got um, the Summer's Watching TV, and uh, the, the show is called Pregnant Baby? <laughs> <laughs> That's literally oh, what happens yeah. in Kill the Moon. <laughs> except it's not a joke. <laughs> we'll be back on Pregnant Baby. Oh god, I haven't watched Rick and Morty series four yet. I need to do that. Oh, I th- I think it's pretty good. Um, there are some, there are some. I like I like Rick and Morty at the moment because it's one of the least controversial things that I enjoy talking about. <laughs> Wait, least controversial Rick and Morty? Yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't think we've got we've got to that stage, but there we are. Wait, so wait, wait, wait so there's Star Wars and Doctor Who, and now Rick and Morty's not controversial. Um, yeah, and you you've. I've, I very rarely see people screaming at each other about uh, about Rick and Morty. Oh yeah, that's true. It's just the fan base has a bit of a reputation. It's just it's just that, isn't it? Really, I would love for Star Wars and Doctor Who to be in a place right now where it's just the worst that you can say about it. Is we the fan base has a bit of a reputation? Yeah. Oh god, I wish. Yeah. Like it's been it's been very hard to actually have an opinion about Doctor Who recently. Yeah. Because. 
people people immediately read into it and they 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 want you to pick sides in this massive divide when it's like I don't feel strongly enough about it and I'm close to the point of not caring. See, I mean, I can I can annoy like so many people at, at once by saying I think Jodie Whittaker's a bad doctor, but not because she's a woman. Now everyone's mad. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean that that's the thing with that question though. Would like. Pick, pick a shit episode from last series, like Battle of Ranskarev Kolos. Would that have been any better if if the Thirteenth Doctor was a man? No, absolutely not. No, it's it's all the writing. I mean, my my top pick for a Doctor, I think she's a bit old now, but is uh, Joanna Lumley and has been for like ever. Oh God, we got her for a little bit in Curse in um, Curse of Fatal Death. I mean, that's the, that's the first thing that made me think. I mean, she's she seems to be really channeling this. Yeah, but Joanna Lumley's pretty much she's she's great in anything. Um, oh yeah, yeah. But 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 yeah, it's like I I didn't care so much by the time by the time I got to the end of series eleven, I gave it a shot for like the first five episodes or so, but I got so bored of just formula after formula, and it what and just it was just it because Doctor Who it runs on formulas. We, we all know yeah. that by this point. They it. It does very samey things all the time, but usually they at least add something to those formulas. But this just felt like, you know, the formula. This this is what a Doctor Who episode <laughs> typically looks like. So this is what we will do with it. And I just felt like I was watching the same episode over and over again. Well, the um, the, I, don't, I can't remember where I heard it now. If it, how reputable the source was, but I remember reading very uh, clearly that the intent for Doctor Who season eleven was to have. Um, Less of a focus on uh, the sci-fi elements, uh, make that all, you know, make that more simple, uh, streamline that, and then so that we can focus much more heavily on the characters, which is fine. It's something I'm fine with, and I um, I can always appreciate some good character writing. But then the characterization in Doctor Who season eleven wasn't very good. Yeah, it was. It was they they tried to go for something. Well. I mean, they said they were going to set out for going, going for something, but then they just didn't do it. Like, I, I, I couldn't really tell you much about Yaz based on last series, apart from the fact they had another companion, and apparently she's a policewoman, and Ryan which, which, has, comes, which yeah. comes up in zero episodes. Yeah, you, you'd think that she would have some well, skills woman felt, woman based on the, worth, yeah. You'd think she'd have some like some skills, some experiences that would come up and be relevant from uh, uh, to, to to you know to having adventures in time and space. Being yeah, a... like in like in Arachnids in the UK when uh, when th those people pull a gun on her and it's just like she, a policewoman, isn't she? Yeah, I mean, you'd assume that she'd have some sort of like authority or uh, she'd be good at you know con controlling people isn't the right way to put it, you know, but uh, getting people to how what, what's the phrase I'm going for here? She'd be good at uh, calming people down, let's say one of those controlling skills. controlling the situation. Yeah. yeah. Um, which has also yeah, always been one of the Doctor's strong points, which we don't get to see much at all. Yeah, that's true. It, it was just very one note, I felt, last season. It was just sort of there, yeah. to, there to assemble the elements and get to the, end of, get to the end of the episode, sort of vaguely looking and sounding like Doctor Who. We're, we're like a little way into the sec uh, to Jodie's second season now, and I feel for the 13th, Do 13th Doctor, we've got enough characterization to fill... Maybe three episodes for her. Like she is yeah. such a blank slate. She's quirky, and that's about it. Yeah, I can feel it's getting stronger in Spyfall. Yeah, yeah I can. I'm starting to see cracks in the shell because, like, um, because like she's built up this demeanor of oh, I'm this quirky, bubbly children's TV presenter. But like, like at the end of Spyfall, I suppose we're just sort of getting into Spyfall now. But yeah. at the end, at the end of Spyfall, you do start to see a different side to her when like Graham confronts her and says, you know, you got to open up to us a bit more, Doctor. And then she actually like, and and that's and that scene where she she reacts to um, Gallifrey on fire. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's it. That, I mean, that's that that's difference. That's nuance. That's not just oh, I'm. <laughs> Oh, I'm a quirky doctor, and I'm. Oh, look, we're gonna fight the Daleks and little, 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 little fat baby men that can't die or something. The problem I had with that, and I was like, I was thinking this watching the episode was um, when they say, "Oh, doctor, you never share anything with us." I was thinking, when what, have we ever seen that? Have we ever seen them like ask her stuff and her uncomfortably try to shy away from it? 
or because that I mean it seems like they wanted yeah. this arc of her being sort of closed off but they realized they'd not characterized her that way at all so so they just had some other character say you've always been awfully closed off yeah that yeah that's true it's 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 a very late in the day addition like you'd think that they would have brought this up last year but last year it was so focused on well it was it was supposed it was supposed to be helping Graham and Ryan recover after the death of Grace but that didn't really go anywhere we just had like a couple of random scenes and the, the resolution of that where um or at least what I see is the resolution of that where uh Ryan calls Graham granddad for the first time is um it's it's nice it's a well done scene I love that it's I love that see because of how the the, the tone of the series had been going so far um, and lots of people were speculating that Graham was going to die in the final episode. I really thought that they were going to oh, do yeah, something I where... That, yeah. uh, I really thought they were going to do something where, let's say, Graham is dying, and Ryan, uh, without even thinking about what he's saying, goes, Grandad, no! And that's the <laughs> yeah. moment. Like, yeah, ultimate yeah, cheese. I mean, yeah, I mean, ultimate cheese, yes, but, you know, then the moment would have meant something. But I, I, mean, I, that's I, like, thing. I like how they do it. I like how it's just a sort of understated, oh, I'm sort of ready to call you this now thing. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. It just, sort of, it just sort of came out of nowhere. But but yeah, the, but yeah, the Doctor last series was just sort of there, wasn't she? Yeah, and that's yeah. like such a... That's something I would never want to have to agree with about a, a series of Doctor Who, but here we are. The Doctor was just sort of there. Yeah, like I see why people have been saying... I see why people have been saying the 13th Doctor is the worst Doctor based on Series 11. She's improving a bit now. Wow. We're starting to see different sides of her. And I'm starting to... I'm getting hints that they're going somewhere with it. But at the same time, I don't want to fall back into the... Maybe they're actually going somewhere with it. And that's why I should keep bothering and staying invested. Because that was Stephen Moffat's trick all yeah. the time. See, I'm, I'm so ready Maybe to... I'm going to do something interesting in the future. I will say... Spyfall, yes, they've started characterizing her more. Orphan 55, not so much. But I guess we'll get to Orphan yeah. 55 after, after we use Spyfall. We'll get, so, we'll get to that. Okay, your thoughts on Spyfall? Um, it, was, it could have been... I, okay, part one, I thought was fine. Um, I thought if it was in any other season of Doctor Who, I'd think, you know, this is a, an all right middling episode. It didn't really add much characterization for principal characters, which is what the series has been missing so far. But that, you know, not every episode has to have strong characterization for the, for the main characters. Yeah. So it's, it was a fine episode on its own and it, it I, would be great. I, would, I, would, I it thought it was good. By better characterization. Actually, I thought it, I thought it was good that they actually gave Yaz something to do. Oh yeah. That was great. I love it. When yeah. They <laughs> Yeah, the yeah the bit where she's um talking to uh, what's his name Barton, where under the guise of journalism, it's like it's not really so much the dialogue that does that; it's the fact that Mandip Gill genuinely seems enthusiastic and yeah. just sort of like, oh my god, I've got a bit where I do something, yeah. And then uh, undercover work as well. That's like, oh my god, she's a policewoman. What? But, but that's relevant now. And that yeah, d doing undercover work. Yeah, I thought that was quite encouraging. Um, um, yeah, I mean, then, I, I mean, I liked Spyfall. It was like this fuzzy little warm nostalgic hug for me because I've realised something. There is not a single original idea in this episode at all. Seems for often, often fifty five, but yeah, yeah, same for often, often fifty five. But yeah, no, like every single bit of Spy is taking a ref. So Yang, you're breaking up with that there a bit. I'm gonna quickly change Good the episodes. call region. Hang on, what? So you're breaking up there a bit. Hang on. You're breaking up there a bit. I was just going to quickly change the call region to fix the connection. Hello? Oh, dear. Oh, uh, are we oh. gone? Oh, are you back? Hello? Hello. I'm back. Wonderful. I'm back. So, uh, Hello. What was that? You were breaking up there for yeah. a bit, so I was just changing the region. What was I saying? Um. Yeah, yeah, it was... It was fun because I realized every single element in Spyfall is recycled from a previous episode. And they're all good episodes, but it's like the strange, the strange ghost-like creatures, Army of Ghosts in Series 2, 
Um, and in Army of Ghosts in Series 2, there was a classic Doctor Who villain behind these strange ghost-like creatures that have shown up everywhere, which, which happens in this one. Over the, over the course of the episode, this character that we thought is good the whole time, he turns out to be the master in disguise, Utopia, Season 3. There's also that bit oh, from... And um, more recently, um, also that... World Enough in Time. Yeah, and more recently, World Enough Time. Um, yeah, and there's that there's that scene where Barton's talking to the companions over, uh, giving them a threatening phone call, which felt like it was directly out of Sound of Drums. It's like, and and the killer sat nav right at the start of the episode. That's from Santaran Stratagem. It's like I was sitting there pointing at all of these little reference points and just like, he he's done oh, yeah. this on purpose. Do you think he's deliberately constructed? Yeah, I think so. He's deliberately constructed an episode which is based off of all of the ones that have worked before, because that's how Chris works. Yeah, I've seen he, you he talk constructs... about that. He's a very analytical writer who will just sort of work to a brief. Who will look at look at yeah? He'll look at what's worked before and he'll construct it in such a way that it will. It, it like, I think Spyfall's great. I think it's warm and fuzzy and cuddly well, and wonderful, and it's got well, lots of big ideas in it. And it may, but at the same time, I'm sort of trying to fight that and remembering, no, it's very cynical because it's ju it's just composed itself of all these past elements that I've seen before to try and get me to like it and try and get me to care about Doctor Who again, and it's worked. I'm a victim of brainwashing, and it's worked. But the problem then is that all of those episodes that's borrowing stuff from have got better characterization to support your investment in the actual story. Is uh... that is true? Yes. Uh, plus, uh, how do you feel about... I've forgotten his name. I looked it up before this. I've forgotten it now. Um, the guy who plays the master, how do you feel he did? I quite like him. He, he, he's, kind of, he, he's very growly and over the top. I like, I, like the way, I like the way that his voice sort of growls. Uh, and he kind of reminds me of a lot of John Sim in places. So again, that, again that's kind of riffing on past episodes. See, I loved... Well, I didn't love. That's a very strong word. I was enjoying Spyfall Part 1 right until that reveal, and the way he sort of overperformed every line made me just absolutely groan. I I just... I couldn't stand yeah, true. it. true. That's, that's, that's kind of what Doctor Who is, though, isn't it, really? I mean, it's not the bits I like. <laughs> yeah, true. I don't know. I just... I, I like the... um. I like the structure of part two, where it's like the Doctor is the the, the doc, It's like it's like the Doctor versus the Master over do, lots of different time periods. So if we're if we're and like and like he sh and like he show and like he shows up in different costumes in each time. Oh, yeah. It's it's just like it's cartoony. So he was. I I think he was much better in part two than he was in part one. His first reveal made me so predisposed to dislike him as the Master. Because like those first couple of minutes, oh, the with reveal him was felt... the reveal was shit. I can yeah. agree with that. So and that's all I you know yeah. that's all we got to see of him for like a week. So I was there thinking, wow, they've just they've ruined this. Like oh, cause I, the master I, I, is awful I watched now. This basically, I watched this basically all in one go. So oh yeah. So um... yeah, cause, yeah, because I couldn't be bothered watching it when it first came out. <laughs> then when we get to part two, there's there's something very important that I feel was missing. Which is, the Doctor doesn't even acknowledge the stuff that's, like, just happened between her and the Master. Like, surely that would in some way inform her perspective on uh, the Master popping up. You know, Missy's whole redemption arc would in some way inform the Doctor's uh, view to all of everything that's happening. And it's like, the show pretends that didn't even happen, almost. It, it well, feels it like they want to reset. It yeah, it kind of it, it kind of refreshes itself and forgets about it. But the thing the thing with part two though that the thing that kind of that kind of made me like the master was um, that confrontation in part two that they have on the type on the top of the Eiffel Tower where the master gives that um, gives that monologue about Ga Gallifrey on fire at the time. I I really like that monologue and that confrontation. And then um, was... that moment on the Eiffel Tower where the Doctor. The master is now, you know, not your typical Aryan who is disguising himself as a Nazi officer and he's using a perception filter to make them accept him. The doctor stops his perception filter and leaves him to the Nazis. And the line that she delivers is like, are you sure that's what you want, to, you want her to say there? Yeah. I now they'll see like, the real the you. Fuck? 
Like, what the fuck was that? It was so... I mean, first of all, it was so tone deaf. It's like, now they'll see that you're brown. Okay. Like, okay. So that's what that's what thirteen does now. I mean, remember in um, you know, I, and I would be, I would be if if there was characterization for the Doctor, you know, establishing her as a much darker version, then I'd be like, cool, yeah, that's something she would do. But right up until this point, she's been all la da 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 da. Look at me, I'm bubbly and happy. Hey, fam, kill him. Okay. <laughs> it's just like. This is why I'm saying. This is why I'm saying that I'm kind of interested in the direction that we go with thirteen from here on out. Because now she's done that. Yeah, but I almost feel like um, I almost feel like they don't realize the implications of what she did. I almost feel like they just thought, "Oh, that's a clever way to get rid of the master, isn't it?" And then left it at that. It's yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I mean, I was just reeling from that. I was just like, "What the fuck?" Because it's like in uh, Arachnids in the UK. I mean, it's, it's it, I mean, it's totally changed the way I see thirteen now. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like Arachnids in the UK, where they have uh, the scene where not Donald Trump wants to shoot the spider to death, and the Doctor's like, "No, you can't shoot people. Guns are bad. You can't shoot spiders. Sorry, guns are bad. Let's instead. Okay, don't shoot. Okay, he's not going to shoot it. Good. And then, or does he shoot it? I can't remember. But what she's trying to make happen is for him to leave it alone so that it will slowly starve to death. That's not better. No, that's not. <laughs> So and it's like yeah, she's just sort of she's just sort of unreliable and reckless. Yeah, um, that's um. Ha- hang on, someone in the chat, um, English giraffe. He's just said, isn't that what the seventh Doctor was like though? All happy and bubbly in the first season, then gets ultra dark and manipulative. That's where I'm hoping that we're going with thirteen. Yeah, but I think well, I've not seen much of uh, of seventh. Oh, I'm a season. huge fan of the seventh Doctor zero. Oh, so, I've, um, I've seen yeah, I've seen mo- I've in, seen most of his like darker stuff, but I've not seen his bubbly ter- his bubbly time. Yeah. See. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I saw. I saw most of. Um. I, I saw most of it out of order, like most people. But I have since rewatched seasons twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, and it starts out very, very light, fluffy children's entertainment, and it gets slowly darker and more manipulative over the course of it, which is why I'm kind of optimistic about thirteen going forward. Yeah. Still a bit iffy, but yeah yeah and i said that and i said the nazi moment i was just like <laughs> can we what? call it that forever please the nazi moment the, the not the nazi moment in 13 yeah it's like i mean it's something to remember isn't it i i, I wouldn't have really remember yeah i mean i mean the only thing that you'd really remember about 13 based on series 11 was that they they changed the doctor's gender now I'm now I'm like she threw the master to the Nazis, and the reason I bring up arachnids in the UK <laughs> in relation to this is um, that whole moment where um, where she uh, she says don't shoot it, just you know let it starve to death. In something that was like better thought out, that would have been a moment that would have been a, a deliberate moment of characterization where they're setting something up for later. Or, you know that's the kind of thing she'll do. That's what she's like. She has an, uh, such a hatred of guns that she won't think about, oh, that would actually be a more merciful death for it. That's, but they just leave it. That's just, I don't think they even thought about what was happening there. I think they went, doctor doesn't like guns, right? No. Okay. Yeah. And I'm worried that's well, what Arachnus they're going to do well, with the Nazi moment. Yeah. To, to, to be fair to Arachnids in the UK though, it does feel like a first draft. So <laughs> how is you that? Know, maybe they didn't think it. about this. <laughs> I don't know. You, fucking... <laughs> you know you've got a sticker you know, you when you're going. You know you've got a sticker when you're going. To be fair, they probably didn't think about it. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's just because maybe it's just because Spyfall was con- entirely composed of recycled elements, and I'm feeling feeling nostalgic and fuzzy towards Doctor Who again. So, yeah, it did its job. So, um, should we? Should we talk about the things are going to happen in more episodes bait that they did at the end of that? Oh, yes, The Timeless Child. Yeah, it's another one of those things, isn't it? Hey, yeah, big mystery you know box. what a season arc is? Let's say the same word for a few episodes and then it will mean something eventually. The Timeless Child. What is The Timeless Child? I wonder what The Timeless Child is. Torchwood. Did they Torchwood. do those? Um, well, they, they Oh, The Kraken Time was... That actually kind of bled up to something. Oh yeah, the Saxon oh, yeah, the was well done, I think. 
Oh yeah, yeah, the Saxon one was well done because they've got. Uh, uh, there was some. There was one of the episodes where it sort of cu- where it cuts to Martha's mum at the end, where it shows that she's being manipulated by the Saxon people, and that was great. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What else? Do, yeah. What else do they do? Um. Yeah, there's the crack in time. Yeah. But yeah, the timeless child. Yeah, I wonder what it's what's going to be in that. All of. Um, now I'm I'm feeling pretty lucky at the moment because. Gallifrey lore isn't like really what I care about when it comes to Doctor Who. I don't know much about it. I've I've seen most of the Gallifrey episodes, but you know I, I've not rewatched most of them. Um, there's some decent there's some decent big finish stuff, but it is very confusing and but apparently pretentious and wanky. Um, apparently they're gonna apparently that was all built on a lie, so it's gonna be interesting to see what they do with that. And also the Masters destroyed Gallifrey. Yes, that that is going to be interesting to see what they do with that. Oh yeah, the um, the hybrid, the hybrid. Oh my god, is that what they're doing? What? Remember, the hybrid will come and burn Gallifrey. Oh, is the, are they going to make? No, but that would require them acknowledging things that have happened before in the show instead of pretending like it doesn't. Well, you know. Well, yeah, but well, yeah, but that's yeah, but that's the thing. They did start to in, to remember things that happened more. Remember more things that happened in the show, like the Doctor did the Master's knocking. You know, yeah, the, that's the, the, true the, the, actually, doing, but. I mean, we've not got anything other than and a I heard, superficial I heard, reference. So and far. I heard the words, and I heard the words "deadlock seal" for the first time oh, yeah. in about well, season, ten years or something. Season eleven was full of the words, you know, like Artron energy, vortex manipulator, but like, it, um, and then when when you've got this, you know, they um, they will reference things that have happened in the past, but when it comes to the, the the direct implications of what's happened recently between the Doctor and the Master, that's just something that they'll ignore. That's just conveniently absent that, yeah. that was part of something else yeah and the, like the actual characters the character motivations are sort of like we still don't even know we've had a full episode now we still don't even know if this is a, a master that's like has the master been resurrected after missy died has um is this a master from before missy we we literally don't know yeah it's like yeah it's like you could kind of brush this off back in like the 70s and 80s because no one no one paid as much attention to continuity except for like diehard fans back then which is how you end up getting like three different episodes which all show atlantis being destroyed in completely different ways it's like doctor who continuity is a massive mess but oh yeah th- this was this was like a couple of years ago and chris has done this before torchwood season 1 and torchwood season 2 it complete it can season two completely ditches all the character development that it did in series one because it's like okay that one season one was shit it doesn't count all right oh my god the, the only episode of that recently i've watched uh I've, the only episode i've watched of that recently is the uh is day one which is a oh, beautiful masterpiece sexy. oh yes it's amazing that's like that one. that's like... peak so bad it's good <laughs> Yes, my favorite part of that isn't even the uh, isn't even the sex alien. My favorite part of that is that the sex alien arrives to the earth in a meteor that crashes into the ground like a meteor does, uh, and then is sitting there on fire in its crater. And then Gwen throws a chisel at it, and that breaks it completely. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's and like and like that's th- and like that's the thing about the thing about that episode, which I find kind of interesting, because people always go like, "Oh, Chris Chibnall has such such an agenda." The 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 gender politics in that episode at the start of it are quite dodgy, because Gwen basically unleashes this sex gas alien, which then go which then goes around fucking people to death, and all of the team are like really passive aggressive towards her for us. Like that's your fault. Well, yeah. it's, like, it's an accident. It's her first day. I I almost feel like um... and the th- and the and the reason that and the reason is the reason that she throws the chisel and it opens it is she was responding to a bit of casual workplace sexism. Oh that, yeah, yeah, uh, that, I forgot um, about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, she's let's... responding to a bit of casual workplace sexism and she causes it, so it's her fault. The worst line in the episode is like, um, some soldier goes, "What are you doing here, little girl?" And then Jack. And this is supposed to be him defending her. Comes in and goes, she's wo- she's with me, and she's not a little girl. From where I am, she's got all the right curves in all the right places. Like, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's trying so hard to like be cool. To, like, establish this as the grown-up Doctor Who, isn't it? Oh yeah, I mean, alien that fucks people to death. Mm. But it's um, 
But I, I my yeah, I'm, su- conspiracy... I'm surprised that Cyber Woman got all the hope, hate, and that oh, one yeah. didn't. Cons- my conspiracy brain I'm... tells me that um, Chibnall just knows that by giving the appearance of being progressive, he's likely to get more work, and just isn't actually. I don't know. It's odd. Yeah, because because uh, like as I as I mentioned in a video that I did recently, um. It does. It does just sort of feel like this is an element of Doctor Who that we typically see, and now we're going to put it in here, like with the, the what, like with not Trump in Arachnids in the UK. It's yeah. just sort of like another thing which Doctor Who typically does this sort of thing. So we're going to put it in here. But um, talking about huge political messaging, would you like to move on to Orphan Fifty Five? Oh yeah, let's let's move let's move on to Orphan Fifty Five. What did you think of Orphan Fifty Five, Jay? I'm gonna be real. I thought it was bad. Uh, I, I understand it. that it's bad, but I don't care enough about it to um have much of a strong opinion. Oh I can yeah, I can understand that. Like I I would yeah. If this was a show that um if this was like the first episode of a show that uh, I'd never seen before, I would probably just turn it off and then never think about it again. But... Yeah. Oh, my God. So, right, let's... uh, I've got a reaction uh, picture here of me watching uh, Orphan 55. Uh, There it is. Uh, It's on the stream now. That's that's a live picture of me watching the episode. Uh, That's not come up for me. Uh, there's, there might be a little bit of a stream delay. But, um, yeah, they okay. they did some things with this episode, didn't they? Yeah, it was... It's sort of like, it, it falls to pieces in the second half, I really think. I... Because, like, the... I don't think it was good like to Like, the way with. it's... Yeah, yeah, like, the way it starts, it it's basically just Paradise Towers 2020. Well, it's, um... You start off with that. Um, have you seen? Have you seen Paradise? I haven't Towers? actually. It is. Um. I mean, I quite like Paradise Towers. It's stupid and corny, but I love it. And it kind of remi- it's like Spyfall again. It's just playing to my nostalgia. But it's like no one likes Paradise Towers except me. Why would you do this? <laughs> but um. Fall it's, again. It's oh, just God. playing. To- ignore. Ignore the things that just happened. People don't need to uh, to worry about that. Um. So. We open up with that uh, that woman who I genuinely can't tell if she was supposed to be an alien or a furry, like or, or both. <laughs> it's like you you need to you need to watch you need to watch season twenty three. It's so bad, it's funny, and it, that costume just reminded me of season twenty three. It's like she's got some weird hair. It's like some emo makeup and a furry tail, and and her name um, is hyphen with the three. Oh yeah. It's so, it's so bad. It's funny. That's it. D- yeah. D- is that? <laughs> then we get. Like, am um, I ba- am I wrong for thinking that this is fun just because of shit like that? Oh yeah, it's like it's there are. Oh, like, season twenty four. I am. I apologize for making a mistake. Thank you, defrosted robot. Um, was it um? By the way, a deliberate reference to what's the episode called? I'm blanking now. Um, Mysterious planet. Which what's the Oh yes, that too. It aims that as well. It's like a it's, Well, I mean it's fully exactly the same reveal. It's like just it's the same moment lifted from the um I'm gonna well, say I it, mean, a better you, story. I mean if you I mean if you're gonna argue about uh, Orphan fifty five lifting its reveals, um it was Earth all along, you oh, maniacs, yeah. you blew it up. Yeah. And there's it nothing original shit, that about Orphan fifty five. Um the the whole um, yeah. thing. So we've we've got the uh, we've got the the resort where we don't spend any time like meeting the characters that we're going to be spending time with. It's just immediately action. Oh, Ryan's got a thing in him and he's hallucinating and bats and oh and now there are creatures attacking and now we have to run away. That's how the that's how yeah. it opens. And they and they and they do this really pathetic attempt to introduce a sort of maybe love interest for Ryan and oh, like yeah, what the was only he thing. With that? They have What's, nothing yeah, in common. Like the un- no, they've got nothing in common. No, they they no. they both have dead parents. Yeah, except one <laughs> of them actually no. doesn't. Except she does. Yeah, except one of them actually doesn't. <laughs> yeah, they they when they're sat down in the trailer when they're talking. So um, you've got a you've got a dead parent. I've got a dead parent too. Should, should we snog? 
Yeah, that's literally. And it's, then the snog comes at the end of the episode. That could literally be that dialogue. The snog at the end of the episode happens, and you're like, "Whoa!" I, they had they they felt like that was enough. Okay. Uh, you know, I guess. Uh, <laughs> like the the amount of characterization they got. Right. I was just thinking. Well, you know that I guess they find each other physically attractive. That's it. That's all we have to go on. Like they both find each other physically attractive, and maybe you know, uh, fairly fairly easy for sex. Like you know, they they don't mind. That works. That that that's how people meet each other in real life, right? Sure. I mean, you know, it's uh, <laughs> it's it's nightclub it's like, level it's... of uh, of. <laughs> Of interaction before hookup. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of like um, you remember Battle of Ranscore last season where Br- Bradley Walsh Graham t- just goes to Octa. I want to kill the bad guy because he killed yes. Grace, and then and then later and later and later in the episode, while well, it's doing nothing with that, he just comes out. Oh, turns out I can't do it. I've decided not to do the thing I said I was going to do. Just- I've changed yeah, as a person. We we have we haven't done anything to do with that or provided any character development. No, I've just decided not to. It's yeah. just like base. Um, um, speaking of that, we've got um two characters in this, and I want I've I've, I've watched a review recently of Voyage of the Damned. Right, and oh, what yes. this episode was trying to do felt like they were going for something similar to Voyage of the Damned, where they would introduce some characters, and then they would just 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 to be killed off. You know, they would yeah, just try to, very yeah. hard to be like, oh, these characters, they love each other. They're, you know, the Benny and I've forgotten the woman's name. But... Oh, the, li- the, little old, the little old lady and the little old man. Yeah. Yeah. So they're introduced. Literally nothing. We'd learn nothing about them except they love each other. They are in love. They are a couple. One of them dies with one of the most horrible lines ever. I've got two questions. Will you marry me? And will <laughs> you kill me, please? I think this is why I liked it so much. <laughs> well, I, not so not so much. I mean, I think this is why I just thought it was all right because I just had fun with stupid shit like that. Yeah, it's um, and I'm thinking that's like literally their whole characters. They they are in love, and I'm comparing this to what it's really <laughs> trying to emulate. It's like they try so hard to get you to understand just how in love in love these characters are. Um, that they that they they devote loads of time to it. That's like all they have on screen is saying how in love they are, and I'm I'm fairly sure it's to get you to care about them before they kill them off, and I'm comparing that in my head to remember the the large couple from Voyage of the Damned, but we uh, actually yes, but like, yeah, know yeah, things but the, about the, them. The, yeah, we know things about them. Like she spent all that money on those tickets, and uh, they they actually, uh, they actually have a little they actually have a little conversation yeah. where you get to like know things about their life, whereas um, with these people it's, we like, laugh with they them. love each other. We have a conversation with them, you know, we, we, we learn what like what annoys them, what what keeps them together, why they love each other. We why they love each other, that's a big thing for uh, empathizing with it. Um, yeah, and there weren't that many there weren't that many scenes either. They were like really quite concise. And it's like it's it's now um it it's now this feels to me more like um Chibnall appeared on screen, said if the doctor is too late to save the day in this episode I will kill a puppy. And then that's it. It's like, that's how he gets you to care. He said that there are things that yeah, will go wrong. Yeah, it's very, it's just sort of very cheap tricks. It's like when they kill Grace off in Woman Who Fell to Earth just to make you go, oh my God, didn't see that come in. Yeah, except you did because she wasn't in any of the promotional material. Well, yeah, that, <laughs> that, that too, yes. But um, I don't look at promotional material. I don't care that <gasps> much. Um, oh my God controversy um, but but yeah that 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 felt like a cheap trick and this was a, this was a very cheap trick but i i laughed i oh, did yeah, it was, because it was so it was i did like because it was so stupid a grown and I, can't, laugh. I can't and it's like i can't feel like i hate orphan 55 like lots of people are saying because, because it just made me laugh so much yeah i can't i mean like and I quite there's a bit of a spark at the start of it for me. Like I like the idea of like Ryan getting a Ryan getting an infection off the vending machine. I mean, like I like that. Sure, it's a little yeah. little stupid idea. And but it's like 
To me, the only way I can feel hate towards it is if I think about what could be getting made with that money instead. And then I'm like, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yes. J j just try and forget that. Yeah, okay, but... Okay, just try and forget that. Just calm, just sit down. Accepting just the breathe, premise that it yeah. exists, I'm like, yeah, okay. This, uh... But, okay, one thing that really did kind of... I did not like is how the Doctor is characterized through this one. Because I would say, you know, it's it sort of improves in... Um, and I, I think I think they're going for a darker doctor, but it's just they've made her less like the doctor now. She sacrifices the ma not even sacrifices, she's just like throws the master to the Nazis. Um, I mean, remember in Last of the Time Lords when when he's pleading with uh, when he's pleading with the master to regenerate because he doesn't want him to die. Yes, yeah. And then at the end of in the just, end of just time, for, just forget everything. Yeah, just forget everything that came before. In the end of time, where he be has a gun yeah. trained on the master and then tells him to get out of the way so he can shoot something that won't kill the master. You know, and then uh, the arc that he goes through with the master uh, since then is he uh, gets closer to the master, she redeems herself in uh, his eyes and, you know, the audience's eyes. Then uh, she meets the master again. Pronouns are confusing. She meets the master again and without really any development goes the nazis can have you because you're brown <laughs> okay in all fairness she didn't say that or, or in all fairness that is a that is an inferred reading of what just happened there but yeah but, yeah it's well it's like yeah, yeah, she it's used the brown i don't think she cares he's brown i'm not i'm just, i think she used that though to her advantage in you know, Nazi-occupied Paris. In the moment. I mean, it's given the 13th Doctor some edge, I guess. Yes. I can't really look, um, at, look at her the same way now. In this episode, there are a few lines. There's one that I've written down and I'm trying to find that just really rubbed up against me the wrong way. Um, it's Oh, yeah, the um, Ryan's love interest, that girl. She says uh, something... Oh, she she's, like, nervous about helping or something. And she looks... To the doctor, and the doctor, you know, would, you know, the character that I've come to know and love would say something about, well, you know, you've done wrong, but now's your chance to do right, you know, something along those lines. What she actually says is, "You caused this mess. You caused this mess, and now you're going to help fix it." It's like that's the kind of thing I'd see an eighties action hero say as they yeah. put out their cigar on their own bicep. <laughs> it's. He's not funny. a very doctory thing to say. Mm. It's like this yeah, character has had yeah. compassion as a, a defining characteristic for you know a very long time. They, I don't think they know what they're doing. I'm. I will be real. I agree with that. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think. It, I don't think it's deliberate. I, I. I just think they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, the thing is, they clearly seem to be uh, fans. You know, they there are so many yeah, references clearly, yeah. to uh, previous things. Like, I mean, I was even happy. I was happy when I saw them do the classic contact. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's like, the it's like it's like the internet's exploded since Ch Chibnall took over, and in, in terms of like. Every, everyone is reading so much into everything and supposedly Chibnall is this terrible person who wants to destroy the show, but I'm just I'm just looking at this and I'm just thinking, no, he just doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, he absolutely doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, and I don't know, I I can't just I can't help but just have sympathy for that, someone in that <laughs> position. You know what? I can I didn't think of it that way before, but now you know what I empathize. He's been thrust into a situation where he just doesn't know really what he's doing, and yeah, I can, I can. Feel yeah, cause, that. yeah, because yeah, you you'd hate that if you were thrust into a situation where you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, look at me trying to stream. But well, it's working. Um, I mean, da, 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 it's working, Jay. Don't put yourself down. It's working. You got the stream working and the chat's going. So people are talking. People are t people are telling. People are <laughs> telling me. To fix my memory of Doctor Who's continuity and it's season 24, not season 23. One thing we haven't really mentioned about Orphan 55 yet is the plot. 
Oh yes, of course. Let's that, get to the plot. The very, um, very interesting plot. Hmm. So we're introduced to a, a desolate <laughs> wasteland, uh, and there are these weird creatures in it. Then um, it's it's revealed that uh, it's revealed to the audience that this desolate wasteland was destroyed. You know by um, you know by intervention from sentient people. Uh, wonder what happened to it and then as the plot progresses it's like i mean hang did you, how long did it take you to figure out that it was going to be earth um well it actually only took me about five minutes because i was tweeting along to it and someone replied to a tweet and revealed to me that right. it was actually earth but um so yeah kind of a bit of a you see that's why i had to ask you bit. because i'd seen before i went into the episode the whole um it's all about climate change things. So as soon as I saw the desolate wasteland outside, I was like, I wonder if that's actually going to be Earth? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 as I said, I don't really look at hype or promotional materials. I, I just turned it on and started tweeting. Um, but yeah, with the, whole, with the whole climate change thing, it's very tacked on. Oh, yeah. It, it, well, doesn't, it doesn't really feature at all throughout <laughs> most of it up until the Doctor mentions it at the end. They... They do the whole twist of it was Earth all along, which is I found really shit. predictable and shit. Yeah, um, and then they have almost the audacity to try and make it a, a twist that the dregs are human. They have these yeah, which you'd kind which you'd kind of figured out yeah. from the reveal of oh, it was actually Earth all along. Especially when uh, Yaz has one line that's like, if you're trying to set up a mystery in your story, don't do this. Yaz says, um, this is Earth, but then what are the dregs? Did the Earth get invaded? And it's like, hey, yeah. here's the answer that it's not. <laughs> it would have been more of a surprise at that point if they were just fucking aliens. Yeah. I mean, you kind of see... It's... The problem with Orphan 55 is, is it's completely thematically jumbled. You've got this first... You got the first half of it, which is about they show up in this resort. Then they then they get it gets revealed that it's actually a hologram all around the resort, and the planet outside is a shithole. It's completely desolate and deserted. And we've got this resort here, where rich people can come and have a nice holiday, and they can pay for the privilege oh, no, 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 of not, not knowing. Not just rich people, rich people, or people who have bought six cups of coffee. Yes, all people have bought six cups of coffee, but but by Starbucks, yeah, um, but yeah, they can come to this resort and they can pay for the privilege of not knowing that what's going on outside is a fucking hellhole. Which I like that as a theme, and if that had actually been the theme, if we'd actually explored that in some depth, then maybe I'd like this episode. But then when they actually go outside, it gets completely jumbled and it introduces this whole climate change and war and apocalypse and this is actually earth all along and it's just like you had a perfectly good idea there and you've just chucked it in a story about climate change being able to pay lots of money to sit in a place where you can pretend it's not happening would be so good thematically and they don't explore that at all i think it's almost like i mean maybe they, that was deliberate maybe that's what they were going for but you, you don't get any indication of that it's well no especially especially since the end of this episode is so very much we are now going to tell you what the themes of this episode are. It's not subtly woven in. I think they just they oh, introduced, yeah. they came up with it. They came up with this idea and they didn't realize that they could actually do something with it. So that they just moved on. They and they didn't think of it again. It's again. It's the they they don't know what they're doing. It's so quickly paced with uh, basically they they push you through the plot. None of the characters get any development. Then um, oh apparently that character changed their mind about that flaw they had and now they're good. That describes like half the arcs, um, and then um, it ends. And then the doctor looks into camera and says, "Climate change is bad, but if we work hard enough, we might be able to do something about it." Oh yeah. Oh, by the way, on, on just one positive thing about the speech, though, it was short. Oh yeah, that it was good. Didn't go on for it. Didn't go on for like ten bloody minutes of the twelfth Doctor screaming in your face about how war is bad. I would. I preferred that. Do you I, That's still like 
No, that was it. That was it. That was interesting. It, it was an interesting approach, but at the at the same time, though, if we're going to compare, if we're going to compare like for like and on the nose with on the nose, I would say that's more on the nose. Plus, okay, just uh, yeah, it is more on the nose. It is absolutely on the nose, but it's it's justified by the character and who the Doctor is, and you know the. Um, when the Doctor is talking about, when Peter Capaldi is, is giving that speech and talking about how bad war is, you can see him drawing from his own life experiences and his own, you know, how, the war that he's seen in the oh, past. Oh, it's, it's a better performance, I'll, no, I'll no, give you that. Not just the performance, it's, just... it's like, you understand the character and why this character, from what he's been through, would be so opposed to war. You understand the drives yeah, that, behind yeah, it. Yeah, that too, yeah. With, um, yeah, I mean, I, you understand I mean... why Jodie would be opposed to climate change, but... You don't actually see that, you know. It's like, I mean, the only motivation that you could really give... Um, it's, it's like uh, Peter Capaldi gave his speech, and then all of the motivation that he can draw from from his characters. I mean, people die in wars, and like, that's bad, eh? You know? Like, war is bad, right? <laughs> There's nothing personal in it. Yeah... Yeah, I mean, I, I, su I suppose the speech didn't really piss me off like lots of people because I just I wasn't really taking the episode very seriously anyway. So I did see your tweet um, saying that you were going to be one of the defenders of the episode. What part? How far through were you when you tweeted that? Because then you later corrected it, right? Hang on, um, I'm I'm having to look at my own timeline. But... I don't remember. I don't I don't remember yeah. my own tweets. Um, uh. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. I think the episode. I think the episode had already ended, and then I realised. Wait, everyone else hates it, and def I can't be asked to defend it. So let's just <laughs> let, let, let's just call it shit. Yeah. I mean, the shit episode was shit. You Orphan haven't painted a particularly good shit. picture of it in my mind. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know. It was just it, it. It was me clutching at straws. I do that when I'm cornered. I I understand that. I. Spent so when long I, when really I, when wanting I, to when like I, season when eleven. I saw, when I when I yeah yeah when yeah I, um when was the last episode that I did that with um oh I did that with Listen everyone was telling me that Listen was this beautiful artistic masterpiece and I didn't feel it whatsoever so I was just like okay let's just let, let's just make fun of it and that that's where Stephen Moffat having this giant brain came from that I comes up in my video. Still remember the time. watching your Listen review when you when you posted that. I... Ah, memories. But uh, I think Stephen Moffat has such a massive brain; oh, it does. fits in this canyon. I would like to see. Um, I would like to play Conkers with Stephen Moffat's brain and Chris Chibnall's brain. Oh my god, those will be huge, right? They, they shatter the universe. Yeah, exactly. I mean, although I'm sure the universe that's, I'm, sure that, I'm sure that's... I'm sure that Stephen Moffat's brain is much, much bigger than Chris Chibnall's brain. It's just so huge and impressive. And I, I, I want to take a cutting of it and put it in a museum. But the museum would have to be, the museum would have to be like the, the size of, the, the size of Ayers Rock or something. Remember Planet of the Ood? Yes, I remember Planet of the Ood. Well, when they show the brain, that was actually Moffat's brain that they they'd learned. <laughs> For the shooting of the episode, he, 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 he auctions it off as a prop. Yeah, it appeared in Blake Seven once as well. Although I don't remember that one well enough to uh, to actually reference the episode it's in. I've not watched that in a long time. But unless you have any more closing comments about the episode, I think I've got uh, you got it off my chest. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't have a very strong reaction to it at all. It, it was just funny. I and agree. I and I I can I can go for some funny cheesy corny Doctor Who like I've watched the Twin Dilemma quite a few times voluntarily just for the so bad it's good quality. Yeah, like I, and, I agree. And, and, but and who, know, who knows? Who knows? Maybe anger. with enough. Who knows? Maybe with enough distance, I'll I'll be able to watch rewatch Rise of Skywalker in, in a so bad it's funny way. Oh, I, that's how I was watching it. Like when it was when I was watching it in the cinema. That's that's how I felt about it at the time. But, true, uh, true, 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 it, true. True, it did it did have some very funny moments. This not not for not for the reason not for yeah. reasons that the makers intent. Of course, the kiss. I laughed so hard at the kiss. I had I tried to. <laughs> 
And when he vanished, yeah. It was it was far enough in the film as well that I felt that I, it wouldn't be rude to the other people in the cinema because there had been enough audience noises. Uh, but before we... Oh, not... Sorry, what? No, no, just, just the, the... The cinema was practically empty when I saw it, and this was during its opening week. Well, see, I saw it on opening night, and we didn't have a full cinema, but there were a lot of people in there. Uh, but before we close up, we've got some uh, some super chats to read. Oh, okay. Which I will find. Right, we've got... Hi, guys. Interesting to hear your thoughts. Thanks again, Stuart, for coming on my podcast, and I love your episode 9 video, Jay. That's from... Uh, oh, that's, oh, that's Tharys, right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jay, I joined late. Can I? Uh, can you start over and also kick Jay? And you can just you can scroll back using the the scrolly scroll bar. Just do that. I said the same thing in my reaction uh, that it felt like a badly paced version of Voyage of the Damned. The side characters were very bad in this. Yeah, one hundred percent. That's the uh, super chats for today. Uh, Stuart, would you like to maybe talk about your channel before we close up? Um, yes, my channel is called Stewbag Fool, where I talk about Doctor Who and also other TV shows, and I do my own strange cartoons as well. It's a horrifying, scary place. It's linked in the description. Um, check, ch check it out. Uh, but other than that, we're going to be doing these uh, for season 12 as it comes out, um, and they will all be archived to the channel that is linked in the description. I hope you've enjoyed Goodbye. Bye-bye.